Let's get together to co-create a breakthrough for freedom of energy, sustenance, healing, and regeneration of the human vessel. Welcome to Physique, the Free Energy Special Interest Group, where science meets spirituality in the quest for truth and knowledge to free humanity and transform this planet into a paradise. Hi everyone, welcome to Physique. I am Crystal, the uh, initiator and founder of Physique. And here we have uh, co-founders, Fresh Brazil, um, James Rink is not here, and, um, and we have Pontus Hefzger as well, who are co-chairing this session. This is the 72nd Physique meeting, and today is the 8th of January, 2020. And on behalf of Physique, I want to wish you, everyone who's present here today, and all the viewers, a um, very happy new year. <laughs> happy 2020. Right, so uh, I actually need to share screen again because after welcoming everyone, there are about 20 something of us here, about 25, I think. It's so good to have all of you here and thank you for choosing to be with us at Physics 72nd meeting. We have very, very, very fascinating, amazing speakers at Physic every time without fail. And today is no, excep no exception. We have some very special speakers here. And okay, those who have just jumped into our meeting room, may I suggest that you mute yourself? Yeah, good. So um, now I, I would like to say that we had had a very successful meeting in the last meeting of the year with Dan Winter speaking, and we had uh, Toby Gross speaking as well. And so much to learn from this wonderful, amazing inventors of free energy, developers of free energy devices and technology. Right, so as I said before, this is um, time and again, Physic is a platform where science meets spirituality. And we encourage scientists to go within to have this um, uh, connection from within, from source, in order to be able to um, successfully develop what they set out to develop here for humanity. Today's agenda is the first session. We have the first session speaker, Paul Townley, who has recently been interviewed by Miles Johnston, and that YouTube, the series of YouTubes that Miles Johnson did had really actually caused quite a stir because Paul Townley has successfully come up with uh, his sensational Nikola Tesla coal steam engine uh, device, um, uh, Roto. Okay, Tesla, this is a Tesla turbine running on negative pressure coal steam. And that is the exact title of the YouTube um, that they posted when Miles Johnston interviewed. Uh, oh no, sorry, this is not the Miles Johnston one. This is what you and your team did, right, Paul? And this is the two-stage Tesla turbine and vacuum pump using frictionless bearings. And the second session, having done that for one hour, the first hour, we have the uh, second session speaker, who is no other than John Smarty Mendez who is a returning speaker because he spoke in physics 54th meeting in the past. Um, he, he's the CEO and founder of Holotech. He will talk about his Holotech magnetic fuel devices, frequency generators and source generators that doesn't need to be plugged in because it is powered by consciousness. Now, have we heard this before or something towards this end as well? I think Science and spirituality actually at this meeting point is moving towards that direction because I think if you remember, there is um, uh, Ilya, Dr. Lucky, Ilya Lucky Servic from Serbia, who's also talking about energy being powered by consciousness, which is great. <laughs> so once we have finished all that with the Q&A, and I believe with the um, 
meeting attendees today, you would have had studied the background of these two speakers with the uh, official invitation to join meeting today that I've sent out on MailChimp. Uh, I've, I've made a lot of links there on the, uh, the, the MailChimp email that I bought email out to you as well as uh, on the website as well that is the purpose of come up with the amazing wonderful question and answers uh, during the question and answer session i don't know if uh, press you were right my internet connection is not really great yeah so uh, i think i was uh, silenced for a few moments right anyway I've, I've, I've just about finished anyway. So, okay. So once we finish all that, the first and second sessions, then this meeting will be adjourned to the 73rd Physic meeting on the 5th of February, 2020. So uh, if you want to contact me, go to, write to me, crystal at truevisionofpeace.com and go to our website, truevisionofpeace.com forward slash physic.html okay and there you will see a lot of updates and links and resources that you can glean from a heck of a lot of, of uh, resources there uh, to help you develop your own free energy device all right folks so without much ado i'm going to introduce our speaker paul townley um smarty Mendes, John Smarty Mendes has graciously let Paul Townley speak first as the first speaker of this year for physique because uh, we have our R&D team here and the whole uh, scientific community is really excitedly awaiting what Paul is going to reveal to us today. Paul Townley has been interested in engineering and computer-aided design since 1994. Um, okay, I hear background noises. Could you mute yourself, please? Oh, otherwise, Pontus, you have to help me mute the person who is making a lot of noise in the background. <laughs> okay, so uh, Paul Townley has been interested in engineering and computer-aided design since 1994, when he studied manufacturing and engineering at school. Paul is a perfectionist car enthusiast who is a very methodical and meticulous worker. He started in the motor trade in 1997 as a Pugio technician apprentice. He has since served in the roles of Jaguar technician, BMW technician, Ford technician, renowned technician, uh, Royal Navy aircraft engineer, Green Flag and AA Patrol. In 2010, Paul became fascinated by alternative energy after learning about Nikola Tesla's achievements. In October 2018, Paul's research and development of frictionless permanent magnetic bearings started a new era when Paul decided to devote his working life to developing a two-stage Tesla turbine and vacuum pump after discovering Nikola Tesla was also using frictionless bearings. This area of research and development opened up a Hansel and Gretel trail of unimaginable possibilities of which Paul is very happy to share with the world in an open source fashion. So, may I now pass the microphone over to Paul to start his presentation? We wait for you. Well, we have a little bit of uh, some introductions here. James, what's up? What have you been... Uh, doing lately and then uh, what kind of important information are you bringing forth through the uh, uh, super soldier talk .com of you? oh well, i did an interview last night uh did you happen to, uh, to see it yeah. anybody with okay. uh, jennifer yeah so uh, jennifer had some experiences with um reptilians and also in the ssp um she's she, I mean, it was two hours long, so it's kind of hard to give you a summary, but uh, I'm trying not to jump off too too far off topic, but um, yeah, I don't know how, how, much, how much you really want me to explain about it all, but um, I am doing another interview on Friday with Peter the Insider. That's the goal, or, or Saturday. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Australian wildfires, as well as um, the attacks in Iran. Apparently, that guy that we allegedly killed was extracted 
he's not dead. So um, that should be quite an interesting story on its own right. And it has something to do with a lot of the Stargates going on in um, Iran. They, they have access to the, tech, um, to the gods, the Anunnaki's, the, the Iranian um, leaders or leadership is trying to make deals with them in order to conquer the world. So all these really negative entities over, over there. So um, Trump has a lot of incentive to go after them. But uh, yeah, anyway, is that, does that answer your question? Oh, yes. Thank you, James. Yes. In a nutshell. Yeah. So, uh, folks, if you're interested in what James was mentioning, go into his website, supersocialtalk.com. Uh, well, and then um, it's a very interesting year, this new year. I mean, everyone has been uh, uh, giving messages on Facebook that the, uh, it's, the tables are going to be turned. So let's just watch and see. But meanwhile, we got to do what we got to do. So bring free energy to the people. Paul, are you ready? Yeah, hopefully uh, it sorted itself out now. I can you hear me clearly. Yeah, you're breaking up still, so. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you're boring. Um, a lot of this confusion has been caused by the US patent uh, actually being called Telebarn. Um, but if you read the opening paragraph, it does say that he has made improvements in turbines and rotary engines. And what isn't well known uh, is that there are two different ways of running the machine. Uh, one is using a diverging nozzle, which makes the machine a turbine. And the other is using a straight port, which makes the machine a rotary engine. And uh, there's a big difference between the two uh, because using the straight port, the, the fluid that goes in expands against the rotor and produces torque, whereas the diverging nozzle um, converts the pressure into speed and the speed is lost to the rotor and if you are using an open uh, an open system that would be a turbine or rotary engine and a stage two vacuum pump the um the the to the torque is made by the port but the diverging nozzle will rapidly condense the water vapor from the air into, in, into water. So you can actually fire water out of the vacuum pump uh, like a water cannon. And this is not known because a lot of people are using hot steam or they're using compressed air and they don't understand the, the true functionality of the machine. Um, a lot of people don't even understand that it's actually a two-stage machine. And this confusion has been caused by the US patents because Tesla actually split the US patents into four separate patents and the patent office denied two of the patents. And uh, they changed figure three and figure four on the turbine pattern to figure one and figure two. So the public have perceived the turbine as a standalone machine and not acknowledged that it's actually the second stage of a two stage machine. Paul? Could you hear me all right then? Yeah. yeah but yeah. You, you turned to Mary. Paul became Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Paul became Mary. <laughs> um, the other thing that um, I'd like to say is that um, if you go through 99% um, of the Tesla turbine replications on YouTube, they've missed a very critical part of the design. And um, 
that is that is the spoke the spoke washer and in the uh, mark one turbine pattern the spoked washer is a three spoke washer and uh, in the 1921 mark two pattern it is an eight spoke washer and, and this part is uh, critical to producing um, the torque on the rotor because that is where that is where the uh, the fluid loses most of its energy it's on its final path to the exhaust and um, <clears throat> the other thing that's been missed is that the the pump or the vacuum pump um, has been looked at as a single stage machine because of the, uh, the modification that the US Patent Office made to the turbine uh, pattern by changing figure three and figure four to figure one and figure two. People then also assume that the pump was a standalone machine it can be used as a standalone machine, but it was always supposed to be the stage one of the two stage machine. And it was, it was me and Jeremiah that figured out that the pump can be run to supersonic speeds to turn the pump into a four stroke cycle engine with the four strokes happening along the spiral path the inlet at the centre, the compression along the spiral path, the power stroke as the compressed air and water vapour uh, flash evaporates into cold steam and then imparts an 85 times mechanical advantage to the periphery of the rotor before it exhausts. Now, it's this feature that allows the vacuum pump to self-run using the heat from the atmosphere and atmospheric pressure as the motive force. Because the reason we have 14.7 psi at sea level is because the weight of the, of the sky compresses the air and at sea level we have 14.7 psi which is an energy source um, which has been there since time began and it's ready and waiting to be tapped. Um, now Tesla in his later years in 1931 he, he released a article when he was in his 70s uh, called a future motive power. Now this article can be found quite easily through a quick Google search. Uh, it's a brilliant article and Tesla describes every single way that a single stage turbine could be used in a closed system. And using it in a closed system, we would be converting the water to cold steam. Now, Cold steam is more viscous than superheated steam. And the Tesla turbine is a viscous machine, ready to take advantage of this. Also, cold steam is, is a lot more expansive than hot steam. I mean, steam is normally made at 100 degrees Celsius, and the, it's said to be 1, 000, between 1,600 and 1,700 times uh, the, the size of uh, the actual water itself. Now, the, the higher the vacuum you have, the higher that figure goes. And if you have a cheap vacuum pump, which you could buy for, say, 50 to 60 pounds uh, sterling, you can make a vacuum of 29.9 inches of mercury. Now, 29.9 inches of mercury will boil ice at minus 31. 
which means that you can make freezing cold supersonic faster than supersonic much faster than supersonic steam that can impact into into the star washers which are which are sandwiched between the star washers are, are sandwiched between the discs when it hits when it hits the spokes it will lose it will lose heat energy and what comes out of the exhaust will be even colder i've actually got a couple of routers here with me and um, i'll start with this one this is uh i can't actually see it on video yet but this is a, a stainless 316 uh, mark ii router this is on a grade five uh, titanium axle this one can actually be taken apart and uh, the disc can be taken off and put back on it's got 15 discs the uh, the center disc is is solid as opposed to a disc with exhaust holes the reason for the center solid disc is because you get twin vortex paths which which basically it stops it stops the thrust going one way or the other because because you've got two two equal vortex symmetrical paths a lot of people miss that feature and um wonder why their rotor is smashing into the side of the casing and, and uh, destroying the rotor um not so much with a metal rotor um but definitely with the plastic one it's probably the death of most tesla turbines i've seen on youtube is because they don't they don't have a symmetrical design uh, with the center solid disc because if you don't have the center solid disc um if the rotor's spinning clockwise it will thrust in one direction and and if you spin the turbine the other way it'll thrust in the other direction and um i've got another rotor with me which is which is the full mark II design this has got this is made out of stainless steel 420 htp which is which is hardened it's the same material as what what is used in circular saw blades the discs are actually sharpened so that's kind of like a pe if you think of a pizza cutter it's the same thing but bigger and um the the star washers the star washers go, go the taper starts the sharpened bit starts from the tip of the star washer now that feature in the in the vacuum pump uh, allows you to use allows you to use the same rotor in the turbine as you can in, in the vacuum pump uh, that's his mark ii design from 1921. the mark one design was done in 1909 and the turbine and, and pump are very different in their rotors and um, I mean there's 12 years of Tesla R&D between the two designs so you know he must have uh, tested a lot of uh, configurations to uh, finally settle on a rotor that could be used in both machines. Paul I need yep. to interrupt again because uh, you know there are a lot of messages here in the chat room that, uh, uh, well, we have uh, Sylvie saying that uh, if you could take off your headset, probably it would work better because it's not oh, getting oh, any better. Yeah, oh. we can't hear you very well, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, I'll give that a go. Is that any better? Because your friend was saying that uh, when Jeremiah, when he spoke to you without the headset, it yeah. was clear. Yeah, I think it's better. <laughs> Is that better now? Oh yes, certainly. Is it? Yes. 
<laughs> oh well, okay. Well, sorry about that. Um, my bad. Um, I'm a Zoom virgin, so uh, it's a bit of trial and error here. Yeah. I think the headset is not plugged in properly or something. Anyway, you carry on. Yeah, it's better. It's so much better now. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'm pleased to hear it. Um, yeah. So um, as I was saying, 99% uh, of replicators on YouTube haven't uh, haven't got the spoke washers, uh, so they are missing out on uh you know one of the key elements i mean it's kind of like having a piston engine with no piston rings or a piston engine with holes in the piston it's not going to work properly and then people say oh the tesla turbine yeah it's got no torque it's it's got no efficiency um but yeah they don't build they don't even build the turbine correctly and when they don't have the second stage vacuum pump which is the critical thing because um one of the, one of the experiments that jeremiah did recently uh with a new turbine um rotor is that he ran he ran the turbine to 20,000 rpm um it's only a only a uh, a polycarbonate rotor so it's not very heavy um and from 20,000 rpm it ran for 30 seconds in the vacuum chamber it ran for 20 minutes just because there's no air resistance so if you put the tesla turbine and the generator and the generator generating coils and 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 uh, with the magnet on the shaft of the turbine in uh within the vacuum of the casing then also the generator isn't going to experience any air resistance and and that's already a massive improvement over anything that exists i mean how, how many how many generators have you seen in a vacuum chamber uh, i haven't seen any um but yeah so um it's a shame that more people haven't focused their attention onto the vacuum pump uh because the vacuum pump harnesses centrifugal force um which which is colossal you, you, you know, because the vacuum pump can run single stage. And if you've got a running vacuum pump running using ambient heat as the energy source and atmospheric pressure as the motive force, you can connect turbines in series. So you could have the, uh, the air going through one into another, into another, running multiple turbines, all at different speeds, depending on uh, how big or small you um, set the uh, valves controlling the fluid flow. Um, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of the two-stage machine, is you can adjust the speed of the turbine. So if you wanted to run an off the shelf alternator to obtain uh, 50 Hertz at 3000 RPM if you're in um, a country that uses 50 Hertz or 3600 RPM if you're in a country that uses 60 Hertz, you could do that. Um, or if you wanted to, you know, use it as a drill or, you know, to run a lathe or whatever requirement you have uh, to, control the speed you, you could set it at pretty much whatever speed you want um, the other thing as well if you look around at all the replications on YouTube you will not see any uh, well sorry that may, may be one or two uh, Tesla turbines with frictionless bearings now if you've got frictionless bearings the the rotor can run at the speed of the fluid so if you've got a a, a high partial vacuum and and the fluid is moving at supersonic plus speeds the rotor will also be running at supersonic plus speeds at the periphery um you know which requires engineering to ensure that the rotor is uh, capable of doing those speeds and also it's got to be balanced to those speeds uh, this rotor here 
this is this is balanced to Mac 3, which is uh, 156,000 RPM. Uh, these bearings are, are also rated at 156,000 RPM. Um, but what Tesla did is he he looked at Westinghouse's 1904 uh, turb atmospheric air, air bearing turbine uh, pattern and he bettered it he bettered it and he kept his mouth shut and he called the bearings almost frictionless bearings um, and left us the biggest clue which is in the uh, Nikola Tesla Museum in Serbia and uh, if you look at that you can see that the uh, the there, there are brass pipes uh, leaving the casing and the bearings are external to uh, the rotor casing uh, because what he did is he used the vacuum um, to to hold to, to levitate the the axle um, for a completely uh, frictionless design uh, which is just absolutely amazing, you know, to, I mean, it's one step, you know, having, say, magnetic bearings or, or, you know, ceramic bearings, but to actually use the power of the the weight of the sky compressing the air to give us atmospheric pressure to actually hold the weight of the rotor that's now producing motive force to be transformed into... Um, into into electricity or motive force. Um, there are there are lots of variations of uh, Tesla's machines that are also not well known. Um, I touched on a few earlier. Uh, as I said, the the turbine can be run as a rotary engine uh, with a straight port, uh, which is basically a variable speed motor. Um, if you use a diverging nozzle. Uh, you can rapidly condense water vapor uh, to water uh, and and that water will be imploded and it will come out it will be imploded and distilled uh, so you know taking uh, water out of the air and getting clean water out of the exhaust I mean I don't, can't think of anything more amazing um, he also had another rotor uh, which isn't well known either which is just basically a, a solid disc and that rotor um, is used for uh, compression so compressed air can, can be produced um, he's also got a, a, a three-stage machine which I've not really touched on with uh, anyone else yet um, it's again that's not well known he, he, he hid that pretty well and unless you've delved very deep into his works uh, you wouldn't spot it and the three-stage machine consists of a turbine vacuum pump and compressor um, my understanding of that is a machine that could be used for underwater travel or it could be used for aviation at heights much higher than what the jet engine is capable of. Just need a drink. Can you still hear me? <laughs> I'm just looking at the I'm just looking at the uh, the chat to see if there's any questions that I can answer. Uh, aren't you going to share your video or your um, photographs and pictures of your turbine, of your rotor? Sure. I, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not fully uh, versed in this, but I, if I go and um, share a screen, um, I can talk about some of the stuff. You don't have to show the whole video. I mean, just bits and pieces that you think is worthy of highlighting. Um, yeah, I mean, Jeremiah's latest video um, showing the uh, the cold steam 
being produced and, and um, it wasn't even at full vacuum, uh, which uh, having the higher the vacuum, the, the, uh, the, the colder the water can be before it will boil. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, naught degrees um, Celsius or th uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit uh, will, will boil um, and temperatures below that. Uh, yeah, I can. Do I have to go on YouTube to do that? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. I need to go here. We're at zero psi temperatures. Let me move it back. There we go. That's 167. Whoop. The first thing we need to do is get any residual air out of the system. And right now we're at 25. We got this valve over here and it's connected to the pipe right here, going to this valve and then this valve here. So this is the exhaust of the turbine coming through this pipe. We got, we, because we have three valves, we can close off the entire system to the vacuum pump. So we'll run the vacuum pump one time. This one goes to our big tank outside, which is our condenser. Our condenser can... Oh, sorry about that. Condenses the steam. So it has to be a gradual slope. The water doesn't have to be at pressures above zero PSI. And we can demonstrate that here. We have zero PSI. And so we can show that at a lower temperature, we can use the solar energy. And, oh yeah, we can store that energy in the mass of the water battery. Hundreds of times the energy for the same price as lead acid batteries and lithium batteries. Simply because it's storing that energy in the form of heat, right? Well, the number one reason you it. to replace your batteries you every it four to eight years. You can get batteries to last four to eight years, but they have to be you the best brand. The highest water. This, all you need is tap water. <laughs> oh yeah, and there's no air in the system. It's complete vacuum. All there is is water vapor and water in the system. We sucked all the air out, all the nitrogen, CO2, oxygen. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't have any flame going. Let's get temperature reading. Crystal, can you pause it? Right there. I did pause it. Do you want to explain this? Sure, sure thank you. Yeah, so um, just to give an overview, the, there's two tanks. Uh, one's got water in. Uh, which is at a higher point and there is another tank which is in a colder place which is at a lower point and when a vacuum is applied the water uh, flash evaporates into cold steam uh, which wants to travel to the to the colder area um, and in doing so it moves at very fast speeds and, and imparts its heat energy to the rotor of the turbine. And what comes out of the exhaust is, is even colder and which then condenses and falls into the other tank. So essentially you, you, you can use water as, as a battery um, and that water tank uh, could be it could be connected to a solar water heater panel, um, which would instantly uh, make it a lot more efficient than any solar system that already exists, um, depending on uh, how well the turbine's built uh, and how heavy it is would depend on how much torque you could uh, take from the rotor and uh, how much uh, heat you could convert into uh, kinetic energy. Um, I will say something about this video that m a lot of people might not be aware of. Uh, Jeremiah con condensed the video from an hour down to nine minutes and it wasn't, the test didn't, didn't end, it, the, the effects didn't end, it, it, would, it would have ran for um, a much longer period. Um, we we're not actually sure. I mean, he, he ran out of uh, he ran out of space 
uh, to record it. Um, but this effect will, will carry on for a long time and uh, a lot of energy can be extracted um, from the heat contained in water. And as it says in the video, um, water can be used as a battery. Uh, now, the beauty about the two-stage machine, um, which Tesla did actually patent in 21 different countries, uh, we've been working on obtaining um, these uh, 21 two-stage uh, Tesla turbine and pump patents over the last few weeks and uh, with help um, from um, a couple of guys, uh, so far we've managed to obtain 11 um, of, the, of the 21 patents and, I, and I'm sure in time we will I'm pretty sure we will get 19 of them. I'm not sure about the two African ones because the countries don't exist anymore, uh, which is Transvaal and Rhodesia. But maybe maybe we can still get hold of them. I'm not sure. Um, but it, but one thing I will say is that, it, which was very interesting to me uh, and Jeremiah, is that all of the English written patents are slightly different. They've all got, little extra bits um, and it's like playing spot the difference between the patents to uh, see what Tesla's added um, in this one or not got in this one. Um, the British patent was uh, one of the most interesting uh, for me because um, Tesla uh, states a line in there that, that says that um, he cannot lay claim to uh, a fluid um, impacting on a spinning disc uh, and atomizing and leaves a reference to a patent, a British patent uh, from uh, 1850, sorry, 1867. Um, so Tesla would have been a boy then. And uh, I obtained patent 696 from the British Patent Office and uh, it's for a old, much older machine using the same principles as the turbine and pump, uh, the principle of imparting energy to uh, a rotor or um, the fluid imparting energy to the rotor or the rotor imparting energy to the fluid. And uh, I did a bit of digging on the um, on the machine that uh, from the uh, 1867 uh, patent, and it turns out that uh, it was a uh, a ship called the Water Witch. It was Queen Victoria's ship that had got this um, device, and. Uh, I, I did find I did find um, a picture of the device in a, a very old encyclopedia. Um, share all of, that picture? Sorry. Do you want to share that picture? Share screen. Yeah. Um, I'll just try that again. Where's it gone? Oh, you see oh, right. the only colored icon yeah it's new at the bottom this of laptop's a bit clunky it's mm -hmm. it's an old laptop and um the green one just click on that yeah button. i've got it okay. right let's stick that out it's coming up now Oh, I must thank Sylvie for suggesting that you take off your headset. When you did, we hear you loud and clear. <laughs> right, I've just got to log in to my Dropbox. Mm -hmm. You've got to click again. Is there any way to stop the, the bar at the top? No, oh, because you have to click twice. First is the, uh, I've got to click again. The, the, the green icon at the bottom of the screen. 
And then once you click on that one, another yeah. instruction will pop up and tells you to click again on the bottom right hand corner. If you click on that one, it will share. Okay. Um, it says select a window application that you want to share. No. <laughs> okay, start again, stop sharing. It's probably this yeah. laptop, it's like ancient. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm clicking new share. Or click stop share, you say? Yeah. Stop yeah. Okay. okay. Let's try again. Right, share screen. Then you uh, share the highlighted uh, or what you would like to share. Click on that one. Yeah, it's just taking a very long time to load anything. It's, uh, it's okay, Paul. Yeah, yeah, no problem. It's an overload for this laptop, this is. <laughs> okay, meanwhile, while you're waiting for that, the uh, Jeremiah has written down this uh, thing to share on chat. The higher the vacuum, the higher the velocity of the particles and the more energy they can oh. deliver to the rotor via kinetic energy transferred by viscosity. With the Tesla pump, we can completely get rid of the condensed or cold tank outside. Okay, thank you, Jeremiah. Uh, a, Jeremiah, yeah. you can speak also if you like. Yeah. If you like, you can speak as well. Just speak up, unmute yourself and speak up. I just unmute you. Okay. Okay, um, whilst waiting for Paul, I just... Yeah, I'm, I'm still not getting anywhere with this. Um, oh, it's okay. You just give me whatever you want to share, and I'll do the share easy. screen. I will do the share screen for you. Okay, just just give the uh, send the uh, files to me on Facebook or on... Uh, yeah, sure. Or on, okay. Or on chat and um, I'll share. Yeah, my laptop's just locking up. It's just too much, too much for it. This time's running out now. Or, um, I'll have to know for next time that I need a faster PC to yeah. handle all this. Smarty will be looking that. Um, yeah, I think it I has, hasn't it? <laughs> I, have to, I have to call out to members of the floor. Please prepare a question for Paul. I can't even see the screen at the moment. Uh, Pontus, you go chair, yeah. because you're oh, the yes. one who invited Paul. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. You suggested hey, Paul. Don't, uh, don't, don't worry about me. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm Puerto Rican, not Russian. Take your time. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. What do you like um, me to share? I can answer questions, but um, I can't, I, I, I've just got the screen back now. Uh, I can I can now see the window with everyone in again. But yeah, it won't, I, it, I, must say, I must say that um, uh, what Paul is doing is very very exciting, and it truly is a breakthrough. If you if you would have done your homework like clicking on the links that I've set out on the website as well as the Mechim email out to you to invite you to attend the meeting, you would you would know what we are talking about here and excuses on the um, technical uh, hiccups here. If you have any 
impertinent questions, ask now. <laughs> we start the Q&A session, aren't we, Pontus? Yep, sure. Unmute yourself. If you don't know how to unmute yourself, put your hand up <laughs> and uh, we'll unmute you so you can speak up for the questions. Perhaps press well, to start the sure. <laughs> you were I don't think the folks really realized what you were talking about, the outside condenser tank of water, of cold water, and the inside tank, which was warmer, and the water traveling through your system converts from which tank and where does it go to? The, the, uh, the system is uh, based on a device called a cryophorus, uh, which was uh, discovered by William Hyde Wollaston in 1812. And the device consists of two tanks, one with water, one that's in a uh, colder um, environment, which could be ice or just just colder as long as it's four degrees uh, Celsius of differential um, it will work and when a vacuum is applied to the the system the sealed system uh, the water in the in the tank uh, boils um, which can be at room temperature or below and the water vapor uh, is cold steam uh, which moves at supersonic plus speed, which can be converted into kinetic energy. So in, in the video, the, the tank inside has got the water in and the tank outside is the condensing tank. Does that answer your question? So basically, you're vaporizing by the use of the loss of pre uh, lower pressure, the warmer water that's on the inside tank, it, it's let's say room temperature, and yeah. then the system goes out and goes into the, like maybe through coils or something, out into the condensing tank, which chills it, and that forms another vacuum because you're making the water molecule in, condensed into a smaller space. Well, it's, it's actually the, um, the the temperature differential between the two tanks is, is the potential difference, um, partly. Uh, and it's actually the turbine that makes it colder because when the cold steam impacts the rotor, the rotor converts the, the cold steam, the heat in the cold steam uh, into kinetic energy and what comes out of the exhaust is even colder than what went in. You're going to mess up the uh, uh, air conditioning companies, aren't you? This is great. Well, this is refrigeration on a... Te Tesla actually called it refrigeration on a, on a scale uh, never been seen before. Cool. Thank you. I'm going to turn the floor over to somebody else. Oh, before you do that, Presbro, um, we have Jeremiah saying that the Tesla pump can achieve extremely high vacuum and extremely high volumes. And he says he has a recent video showing this really well. And if we could display on screen, that would be helpful. Heat to kinetic energy to motive force. So, Jeremiah, I'm going to, would you speak up? I'm going to. I'm going to share screen again. Are you talking about the same video that we were showing earlier? Do you want uh, to continue with that? Just post the link in, in the chat. Do you want me to move forward? It's maintaining the vacuum. Oh, get ready. This is going to go real, really. You got zero pressure. It's too hot to get in. I'm taking it. I'm done. Here, you take this. This is going to go real. I said it not. Okay, it's not the 
Yeah, it's low. It's low. We're at low temp. We're testing. Low temperature. So there's a Sorry, I, I speak it up a lot because of the time constraint. If that's all right with everyone, do you want me to slow it down? Jeremiah? Yeah, uh, Crystal, the problem is the same problem with your machine as with Paul, is that you're trying to record and uh, download information from the net at the same time. Uh -huh. and your machine doesn't, doesn't have the capacity to do it. Zero pressure. Zero pressure. Zero. 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 Zero.
you know that Zuhu who's got no experience with this sort of stuff could uh, get a grasp for what it is and how it works and I, I think I'm probably gonna it's probably gonna take about 20 to 30 parts to actually fully teach everything that I know so far um, and there's still a lot to learn you know we're st me and Jeremiah are still learning stuff even now um, you know this this is a very very deep rabbit hole um, because there is uh, an aviation version there's a vi there's a vehicle uh, propulsion version uh, the, there's you know the, there's the one that makes water uh, there's um, you know one that will actually um, vacuum yourself along so it will create a lower pressure in front of the twin turbine and pull the twin turbine the tur twin turbine will corkscrew itself into uh, into the lower pressure area so you could actually uh, move backwards and forwards in a linear fashion um, by suction rather than propulsion uh, uh, yeah we're still um, we're still discovering new things all the time I mean, Tesla actually had about, um, there's, there's at least uh, 15 patents that actually all interlink together to form uh, Tesla's ultimate flying machine. A lot of people don't know that. Every patent from 1909 onwards is all linked. Um, a few people that were at the presentation have seen that. Uh, there's a there's a chap in the in the audience uh, called Stephen Wiley, uh, lovely chap from Northern Ireland, came to see me, uh, and spent a day with me uh, going over all this technology. And um, so we've got a Nor we've got a Northern Irish team joining us on the uh, building front as of this month so uh, that's exciting the the more people from other countries joining in i mean there there are various uh people in other countries that do message me very often and uh, they're very keen to uh build something um some have got more funds than others and uh yeah i've, I've become uh kind of uh, a mentor for um a, a growing number of people around the world as has Jeremiah we get people writing to us on a daily basis asking us questions asking us for more information um, and, and we educate them because the more people are educated about this technology the the easier it will be to roll it out it said that you have spent the last few weeks with a, uh, a few researchers looking for the 21 different country to stage right. turbine and pump patterns. And it was Nikola Tesla's most patented machine. Eight That's right. Patents yeah. With that country's only patent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. 21 okay. different countries. And then the US is the 22nd country, which is the only country where it was split um at the 21 countries it's one pattern the turbine and pumping what as as uh, parts 1 to 29 in the diagram and then the us was split into actually four patents um which was the turbine and the pump uh, and then tesla actually did a, a separate patent for the turbine as a standalone machine mm -hmm. that patent was denied on the grounds that it was uh the same information as the other patent and so and then he did why <laughs> yeah and then he did a patent for the for the compressor as well um which is actually referenced it's referenced in the u.s pump patent uh the 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 uh the patent application is referenced but the patent was never accepted uh the reason that i know about this is because uh aaron murakami uh, who runs energeticforum.com who's been very helpful in this research as well he found the Japanese pattern because uh, he's half Japanese 
and uh, also found uh, quite a few of the other ones, a uh, very good researcher. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he's, um, he's very interested in, in what we're doing as well. That's cool. Um, and you said that you have personally received the 33 denied patent applications book from the Nikola Tesla Museum in Serbia. Did you? Did no, you? I haven't got. I haven't got the book yet. He, I have. I've bought the book. I haven't received it. But Aaron, Aaron has got the book, and Aaron sent me a couple of the pages of the ones what I'm talking about. The the two patents that were denied, um, the patent applications that were denied to do with the the Tesla compressor and the Tesla turbine standalone. I, I've got those. Um, I've got the uh, copies of those, but I will have the book soon. I'm just waiting for it to come from Serbia. But there are 33 denied, US denied patent applications. Um, a lot of them are related to the turbine. Uh, I think there's eight that are related to the turbine. Uh, and I think six of those he did get accepted in, um, in England. And, and he got a couple of them accepted in uh, France and um, uh, I can't remember the other ones, but yeah, he didn't get he didn't get them accepted. Uh, he or he didn't patent them in many places. He, you know, he's got patents in in England that he never got patented in in USA, and they, these are some of the ones I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this as well: some one of one of the things I'm absolutely dying to get my hands on is um, Tesla's last. Uh, Tesla's last patents that were accepted were his flying machine patents and um, so far I've got the the English the, the British patent the two US patents uh, I've got the Norwegian flying machine and the French flying machine and then there were two patents that he did after that that got denied which is for a for a, a vehicle pr propulsion rather than uh, aviation. So he had a vehicle version as well. Um, and my understanding of that is it's actually a twin turbine, but built in a different way to the aviation version. Mm -hmm. We're actually prototyping that at the moment. Cool, right. There's, there's so much to explore and to learn from you. Oh, right, I, I just want to make a point here, right? Physique has got its own R&D team um, yeah. that meets up every Monday. Uh, Pontus is actually the head of the R&D and Fress is the chair of the R&D team and uh, you are most welcome to join our team because we can help you if, if you're conducting master classes and open sourcing it I think you need a team to work with you and some backup support as well and I would like to call out to everyone here who, who the viewers as well who are listening and watching our videos, please um, do bear in mind that everything here we do, we do it with, from our hearts and um, it, it's, it's, it's a labor of love here, okay, because we don't have funding and we are using our own money from our own pockets to uh, end the time that we spare here that to, to uh, develop and help you develop this free energy technologies as well as healing technologies for humanity and I call to you to pay forward if you've got any extras or do you like to fund or donate or or invest in this endeavor please do so uh, because we need to hire documenters um, uh, graphic artists uh, trans transcribers as well so that we can come up with a proper uh, documented training manual that we are coming up with the with the, the, the three devices that we are developing in our team right now and we can help you with yours as well as well as the many other inventors out there I think uh, collaboration is the key if we work yeah. together as a team and not reinvent the wheel we can go a lot faster and yeah. a lot better and more successful Definitely. Okay? I just wanted to thank uh, Raymundo Hooten as well. He was another guy who obtained uh, a, a number of the patents as well. Um, yeah, it was uh, 
it was very good to unearth the uh, Australian and uh, New Zealand patents, which are also in English, and um, compare them to the Canadian, British, and uh, US patents. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I think what you've just said is brilliant, and uh, thank you. Um, I, I look forward to working with you all. You're welcome. Uh, Jeremiah has a video that uh, he can share. Uh, Jeremiah, I yeah, unmute you. Quick, because <laughs> we are yeah. actually behind and we have the second speaker as well on the side. Although uh, Smarty Bro kindly said that we can have more time, but it's eating on a bit. Go on then, yeah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, you are unmuted. Jeremiah? I'll message him on Facebook to see if he's there. Oh, he, I'm chatting with him before, so I yeah, think he's... I've got my phone, which is not connected to the Ethernet at the minute. Um, oh, uh, James has I, a question, right? James? I, yeah, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, Paul, what do you yeah. think about the old Victorian homes that use steam heating? Apparently from around 1880, it might actually be a little earlier than that, to 1900s, they had a form of overunity, which was slowly suppressed. And those, those homes were so warm that they could, the goal was to heat them um, in, a, in a cold winter day with all the windows open. And now, now we, don't, we don't hear anything yeah, about um, that steam yeah, heating. Straight, funny you should say that, actually. I, I, was, watching, um, I was watching a video uh, regarding that yeah. only yesterday. And... Um, the Empire State Building has got a room that's above where the public are allowed to go to. And uh, the, the chap in the video was saying that uh, when they called down to the, the basement to open the steam valve, the radiator at the top of the Empire State Building is hot within seconds. And that's because steam travels at supersonic speeds. Um, but what I will say to, in, in addition to that, is that the system that they're using is a one PSI system. So um, when you take the air away uh, in under vacuum, ste steam can move even faster than supersonic speeds, especially because it's more expansive. Oh, Paul's been dropped again. Jeremiah, are you there with your video? Yep, I, I think uh, I'm here now. Oh, <laughs> Can yeah, you guys hear me? I hear you now, loud and clear. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, you got to do this quickly because we got another Okay, yeah. so I got, my, uh, I got my screen here. I got the video up and I haven't yep. uploaded it yet, so. No, okay. Uh, if you click start, uh, start share screen, the green one in the bottom. Okay, I think. I think yeah. we got it. Okay, did you click uh, share uh, sound also? Um, I share computer think sound. So. Okay. Let's see if we can hear it. I'm not yeah. sure. And then we suck the air out. Can you guys hear that? Yep, that's good. Yes, we can. That's very good. Okay. So, the, all right. Off our vacuum here. And then we suck the air out of that. So this is just a basic crawfress with, it's, you can't actually see it, but there's, a, I might change the view here in a second, but there's a PSI monitor up there. And you can also or, or, pick up the video as well, Jeremiah, if you want to show Okay, show more. turn it up, you said? You can speed it up, you want to show more. Oh, okay, Sorry. yeah. The yeah. boiling, there's that. Yeah, can so you guys hear it? Our vacuum here. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The air out of that side, the boiling vapor will cause it to keep the vacuum really high in the air. Okay, so one thing I want to show here. Okay, we turned off the other side. You notice it's still it's boiling, right even though I turned off the valve? Negative pressure for a while. That just shows us that there's no there's no flow actually moving to the cold side. Tell them about the salt. Closed it and 
Right, salt water. Oh yeah, we this this was a different experiment. We put salt water on the on the stove, or we put water on the stove and got it to almost to boiling point, and then we dropped uh, we dropped salt crystals, just just salt in there, and it was all it was almost an explosive reaction of steam. So that's oh, that's interesting. interesting. <laughs> I want to show the part here where I touch the side of this while it's boiling. Okay, see that? Usually if, if we were boiling something, I couldn't stick my hand on the jar like that because it would be so hot. It would burn my hand. This is the Coriophorus. This is the Coriophorus that we were talking about. What, te what Tesla's built is a open air cryophorus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, there's, yeah, the two, the two different types of uh, cryophorus. One, this is a closed system, and then there's, there's a couple more you can take. You can take off your cold side, and replace it with the Tesla pump, and that will continuously boil the water in, and release it into the atmosphere, with that pump. And if you stick a uh, turbine in the line with between the pump and your boiler, you will continuously boil the water and get energy from it until the water freezes. So the, the water becomes just this. Oh, and, and you can also heat up the, uh, the boiler with a heat exchanger so that the uh, heat exchanger can transfer the ambient heat into the jar so that it will never freeze. You'll just continuously take larger amounts of energy from the atmosphere as, the, as your boiler heats up from your radiator. It's Tell the opposite the of what your radiator does in the car. In the Tell car, the, the uh huh. And then there's a complete open open system cryophorus, to where you just have the turbine. You just have the turbine and two. Um, you you have a turbine and a pump, and your pump continuously sucks atmosphere through the turbine, and the moisture in the air is condensed in the turbine, so it makes water, and it also cools the atmosphere to very low temperatures, extremely low, low temperatures. You could potentially even get ice or even snow at the exhaust of your Tesla pump. Uh, a normal turbine, uh, after one stage, you lose about uh, 100 degrees Celsius. That's normal. Oh yes, the, the, uh, the temperature differential yeah. is a extreme in this system because you extract a much larger quantity of heat energy from the vapor by increasing the speed that it can travel in a vacuum the particles can tra there's no limit to the speed that basically that the particles can travel so they can transfer all their heat energy into kinetic energy the heat energy literally bleeds into the kin kinetic energy and and the particles can go so fast if they could only lose all their kinetic energy to the rotor they would cool it's, it's well known that when, when a fluid imparts energy to an object, it cools. Wonderful, Jeremiah. And, all right, so do you, do you wanna wrap it up or speed up the video? Is that all you wanna share? Oh, I was just oh, yeah. gonna say, Jeremiah, That's tell, basically, tell them about the well. Ahead. Jeremiah, tell them about the well. Oh, the well, the well, every, every, okay, so the, the earth has an infinite amount of energy stored in it, in heat, not, not infinite, but it, there's so much energy that it's nearly, nearly infinite. I mean, there's no way you can cool down the earth. The earth is a giant battery and the, the best connection to the earth is uh, through a well. It's the water table because water is so conductive to uh, heat transfer. So you end up you end up being able to because like if if you have over a sixty foot well which normally people do where where there's sixty foot ahead or more you will actually you can actually just put a hose down in your well connect the Tesla turbine up to the hose and then connect Tesla pump up to that and you will continuously boil the water from your well um, to produce energy you'll get distilled water as a side effect. Very interesting. Hey Jeremiah, could you stop screen share? We want to see you. You want to see who's talking? I, I I actually don't have a mic. I need to get one. I mean, uh, mic. I, I don't have a camera. Camera, yeah. Oh. I have a good mic. I just got a mic for the YouTube channel, but uh, 
um, you still haven't stopped sharing yet, right? You see your screen. <laughs> yeah, you can see my screen. Oh, yeah, actually, I was going to go to the, to the, I was actually going to go to Amazon, <laughs> honestly, to see how much a, <laughs> a camera would cost. But I didn't realize you guys were still seeing my screen. You can get a day some more. <laughs> Your screen is still on. Yeah. You've got to move okay, well that that's pretty much that's pretty much it for now. That that video. I mean, it's so interesting how I can sit there and hold my hand on it, and it's boiling like w without any problem. And of course, the cold side the cold side can be replaced with the Tesla pump, and you don't even need the uh, you don't even need the boiler. I mean, the condenser. <clears throat> and of course the radiator on the uh 212 degrees i've got something to add to this and uh, the radiator the on the warm side would constantly warm up the water so that it doesn't freeze in in the boiler and, and you know radiators interesting it's interesting about radiators because radiators um radiators have to remove an enormous amount of heat energy from an engine a conventional engine for a, this is just a rough, rough estimate here. I did the numbers in the past, but I don't quite remember everything to a T, but um, if, you, uh, if you have a 200 horsepower engine, your, your engine has to get rid of 190,000 watts yeah. of, electric, of, of, heat, of heat from your engine. Otherwise your engine will melt. Right. So radiators can transfer an enormous amount of heat at high volumes, or they, they can cool something really fast, or they can heat something up really fast, depending on whether you're heating, what side you're heating and what side you're cooling. So the turbine automatically cools the water and because it boils the, or the pump automatically cools the water because it boils all the, the water out. And as the water boils, the water loses temperature. It gives up, it gives up its energy, its heat energy to kinetic energy and starts to build up pressure. But because we're starting with negative pressures, it doesn't, the water behaves completely different. The, the way the How water behaves. How expansive did you say that um, cold steam is compared to hot steam? Oh, cold steam is, is well, hot steam usually, that's, that's how I think of it. Hot steam usually refers to above the normal, or below the normal boiling temperature of water, which has a direct correlation with the pressure. That's why if you go to the top of Mount Everest, your water will boil a lot faster than it would at, at sea level because the pressure is dropped. There's not as much atmosphere holding the water into water state. There's not as much pressure pushing down on the water vapor. And if there's no pressure pushing down on the water vapor, then the, wa the water will vaporize like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I've, got, I've got something to add to this to wrap it up. Um, in 1911, Tesla claimed 95% efficiency with his two-stage machine. In 1921, after he'd done a considerable amount of R&D, in, in the high vacuum pattern, he claimed 100% efficiency. 100, yep. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, and that's impossible. That's people think that's impossible, but you know, Tesla wasn't a dummy. No. In fact, he he probably knows more. I mean, he he's more knowledgeable than anyone I know. I mean, he was, of course. Nothing's impossible. He did the experiments. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James is saying that um, it would be cool if this could be used to heat swimming pools. <laughs> <laughs> James. Yeah, it's still water swimming pools rather than chlorine swimming pools. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. So if you use a distilled, distilled uh, cleaner instead of the Saint Henry chlorine. Yep. Oh, we absolutely. Have Trisha. Trisha, you want to speak up? You want to say something? Come on. Happy New Year's. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. All right. Okay, good. We'll take one last. Thing from Trisha, and then we we'll move on to the next one. Thank you. I was just gonna say, yeah, there is a light that's called like um, uh, ultraviolet light or something like that that cleans pools. That's on the down low in the expensive resorts. 
And then also, um, I've seen a video of an older gentleman that um, would heat up his water within seconds. And his little demonstration on YouTube, he was waiting for someone to, um, you know, back him and patent it and make some money. In physique. <laughs> Trisha. Well, I don't know. I'd have to find the video, but I don't know if he's alive still. I think I heard that he died with the patents or whatever because they they wouldn't fund him properly, of course. And then um, also, I was the same with James when he thought about, you know, the castles and stuff being using this kind of technology is like they had to have been using stuff. And I would just figure that on the down low, there's people in the know that are using this and have been from the get go. And maybe, you know, partially in the secret space programs, especially in the, in the early days, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Electric what do you guys say? companies. Electric companies exactly. and they're charging you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, not maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, maybe on the Tesla turbine system, but they are oh, definitely oh. using something. Yeah, they are. They're using off planet technology at all of these facilities and they're charging us for it. Imagine that. Probably some Marines as well. Yep. Hey, I want to ask you, James, uh, they say that this is the year where disclosure is actually coming out fast and furious. True. So, so uh, the uh, SSB technologies are, are being disclosed right now, isn't it, bit by bit, as Emery Smith was uh, pulling out the cats from the bag. Yeah, they're 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 eighty five percent behind. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna show you everything. No worries. <laughs> so there was like the new patent released by Space Command of the uh, the tri the Delta shaped craft that yeah. had like the little needles that had the little bubbles that are pressurized bubbles that produces yep. zero point field. Uh, so what it, what it, uh what it, Dave Wilcox say that was like in the ter ter um, ter um, like we have um, megawatt, um, gigawatt re um, reactors to pow power plants. This is terawatts. It's a thousand yeah. times more. And it's like yeah. in the size of a small box. That's how much more energy is what we're about to enter into the new age. Yeah, and, that, and that's still 85% behind because like I was saying, we're going into powering everything consciously. Mm. There's nothing higher than that. Nothing. Which is what I'm working with. <laughs> okay, so we can't wait for you to get on to the microphone in the next session now. <laughs> I think it's about time. <laughs> Shall we wrap up this first session? Then we'll hear yep. we will hear you loud and clear, smarty bro. <laughs> one one thing uh, can I can I one thing about uh, Tesla's just like for a figure for everyone here. He was uh, Tesla was claiming 10 horsepower for every pound of weight of the turbine which would mean if you got a 200 pound motor you got 2000 horsepower mm. so i just thought i'd bring that up because it's one of the uh one of the uh, power horsepower figures that Tesla made. Well, I think it was an understatement as well. I think he was actually undercooking his figures on purpose. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, didn't you write to me, Paul, that the, the patents, Tesla patents, churn out like 500 horsepower, the, the old one, the 1910 one? The... Mm -hmm. The patent. Sorry, say that again, Crystal. The 1910, the patent from the year 1910, that one, the patent could already churn out 500 horsepower. Um, he did, he did do uh, a machine oh. that was uh, two turbines opposing each other, uh, each with uh, 200 horsepower, and uh, that was demonstrated. There's photos of that. Um, but he, cla he claimed in, in the newspaper article from 1911, Tesla claimed 10 horsepower from a machine a man could dangle from his little finger by a string, 500 horsepower in a machine that could be held in one hand, and 1,000 horsepower in a machine that could fit in a hat box. Mm -hmm. 
I've actually got a, a picture from a book. Is there a way I could display that real quick? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be very quick. <laughs> we have Smarty waiting on the side <laughs> to tell us about consciousness energy. Okay, okay. I just sent the image. Is it on my screen? Is it sharing with my screen? No. Uh, okay, I, I start, guess I can start, uh -huh. uh, share. Yes, now we see it. Okay, so this is actually from a book called, or it's the Tesla engine from Jeff Hayes. And there's a lot of stuff that's missing here that has to do with this technology. Uh, can, you, can you rotate it? Yeah. Sorry, that's, yeah. there we go. Uh, let's see, open. Okay. Uh, I'd have to put it on, let's see, copy image. Hold on one second. Yes, no. There we go. This is page 23 of the book. What's the title of the book? Uh, it's Tesla Engine by Jeff Hayes. Mm -hmm. It's the, the latest marvel of famous inventor Nikola Tesla's revolutionary invention, a perfect rotary engine, 10 horsepower from a tiny engine that a man could dangle from his little finger by a string, 500 horsepower in a package that a man could lift easily with in one hand, <laughs> a thousand horsepower, motor occupying hardly more space than the carbon box in which your hatter sent you your new derby home. Mm. Anyways, that's the... That, that's that's good the sharing. Thank you, Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. So that's it. We've got to wrap up this meeting now because it's, we can't have a two-hour length of video. It's too much. Okay. Right. Thanks for giving us more time and uh, much appreciated and look forward to working with you all on this. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. So much. And, awesome. Uh, keep, up, keep up the good thank work. You. Yeah. Keep up the good work. And thank you for doing yeah. this from we're your. Going, we're going from the flat stones to the distance. <laughs> open sourcing it for free for all who are interested enough to learn how to do this. Thank you so much indeed for bringing free energy to humanity. Right, so there being no other business, well, I, I have to ask the co-chairs first, is there any other business that you want to speak up about? Nope. Press? Conscious? Nope. James? Nope. <laughs> no? Nope. All right. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for choosing to be with us for this first session of the 72nd Visit Meeting on the 8th of January. So there being no other business this First session is now adjourned to the second session where uh, John Smarty Mendez will be speaking about his new holotech devices. Thank you folks and those of you who are interested please hang around don't go away we're gonna have a short little tiny little toilet break and then we'll be back again starting the second session. Thank you, namaste and happy new year everyone on behalf of Fusate.